The Boston Celtics were able to solidify themselves as one of the best teams in the NBA this past season, and it was largely due to their approach on offense. It resulted in them having a massive 124 offensive rating post All-Star break, a whopping 8 points per 100 possessions better than the league average offense post All-Star break. While a lot of teams try to go five out on the perimeter to space the floor, or they make heavy use of pick and rolls to try and generate offense, the Celtics employed a unique offensive scheme during the second half of the season and during the playoffs that goes against these usual philosophies. In a traditional lineup with a floor spacing center, Derek White might bring the ball up the floor and then have Rob Williams come up and run a pick and roll. Instead, White gives the ball to Robert Williams and the Celtics are gonna take advantage of all the space that results from the lack of a rim protector waiting to provide help defense in or around the paint. They're gonna get into what initially looks like a pin down for Peyton Pritchard, but instead Tatum slips the screen while Wiggins is on his heels, allowing Rob to feed him on the cut to the basket. This has advantages when the defense is preparing to guard the paint as well. Gary Payton is gonna come and double Tatum up top, allowing Rob to get ahead of steam going downhill. The Warriors are forced to tag him or allow a wide open dunk, so when they collapse on him, he just slings it out to a wide open Grant Williams who hits the catch and shoot three. The threat of the pick and roll rather than actually executing the pick and roll plays a big factor in generating offense this way. Rob comes up to set the screen, but he's going to slip it with Jokic staying to trap Brown. Brown gets the ball to Rob near the elbow, resulting in a four on three situation on the weak side. Grant screens for White to get it on the wing, forcing a tough recovery that White uses to get to his spot for a pull up jumper. This idea of using the threat of the pick and roll applies to using the threat of dribble handoffs as well. Robert Williams has it up top and he dribbles towards the corner to get into a dribble handoff with Brown. Cade Cunningham is gonna prepare to try and shut it down. And when Cade turns his head to see where Rob is at, Brown makes a backdoor cut for Rob to get it to him in stride for the bucket. Robert Williams is not a floor spacer at all, at least currently. He took only two threes the entire season, and while he has shown flashes of some really exciting mid-range potential, teams aren't going to worry about him as a catch-and-shoot threat for the time being. With the focus on spacing being so aggressive in today's NBA, how can the Celtics' top two most used lineups, both containing Robert Williams, have an average offensive rating of 123.8 points per 100 possessions? There are a lot of teams that rely on pick and rolls to get the offense moving. It's typically viewed as somewhat of a backbone to the modern NBA offense, unless you're running a more premeditated motion offense like the Golden State Warriors. The Celtics, however, ran pick and rolls only 20.5% of their total possessions, the eighth lowest percentage in the league. Yet they generated possessions that resulted in spot up opportunities at the highest frequency in the NBA with 28% of their total possessions. How are they able to do this without A, relying on pick and rolls or B, having a stretchable center on the floor? Initiating offense from the perimeter through Robert Williams allows for optimized off ball movement from your wings. In many cases, it isolates opposing bigs onto Robert Williams for the duration of the possession, and it eliminates opportunities for switches. Jimmy and Bam prepare to guard the pick and roll between Jalen and Rob. The Celtics use Bam pulling up on the potential high pick and roll to allow Rob to make use of that space since the Heat don't have Bam in the paint waiting to provide help at the rim. Grant Williams sets a flare screen for Rob to get it to Tatum with a one-on-one -on -one matchup against Struess, and with a clear driving lane, Tatum can get to the rim and finish. Once again, the Celtics are facilitating through Rob up top. White is gonna set a down screen on Bogdanovich, resulting in Trey having to guard Tatum's backdoor cut. There's little worry about Tatum running into any help defense as the only potential help is Gallinari since Okongwu is pulled up on Rob. Rob finds Tatum on the cut while Trey and Bogdanovich are trying to figure out the rotation and Tatum ends up getting the bucket. The Celtics still leverage the idea of spacing, but they essentially turn the game into two separate two-on-two -two matchups on either side of the court. When you give Rob the ball at the top of the key and go four out on either side of the court, it typically leaves the interior wide open. At that point, you've got two separate actions happening simultaneously, so there's a good chance you're gonna be able to generate something either directly or indirectly as a result of all of this off-ball movement. This does a good job of generating a lot of backdoor cuts. 
Smart and Williams are gonna get into a flare screen on the right side, and Brown and White get into a pin down on the left. Brogdon does a good job of using some physical defense to force Brown to reject the screen, but he fails to cover the backdoor cut, and since there's no interior defense waiting to help, Rob gets it to Brown for the bucket. The Celtics will turn chunks of the court into a numbers game, and they have faith that if they can get a numbers advantage somewhere on the court, it's gonna lead to good looks. Grant comes up to set a screen for Smart, but he's gonna slip it and drop towards the paint to receive the entry pass. This turns this zone of the half court into a simple three on two matchup. Grant feeds it to Williams in the dunker spot, leading to help from Heald, and Rob kicks it out to Brown for the shot. Williams passes out of the low post to Tatum, and then he immediately sets a screen for him to get to the corner. Draymond and Looney, both of Golden State's main rim protectors, are gonna try and trap Tatum in the corner. Tatum passes to Rob, with Horford making a flex cut to the paint. Otto Porter Jr. and Poole are both in the paint, compensating for the lack of rim protection, since Draymond and Looney trapped Tatum in the corner, so Rob is gonna be able to sling it out to Smart for the catch and shoot three. This high pick and roll is gonna result in a trap near the half court line with Steven Adams and Kyle Anderson. This allows Rob to get the ball in a ton of space and Morant has to decide between switching onto Rob or staying home on Smart. Once John Morant commits, Rob gets it to Smart for the three. This scheme is a variation of the four out one in offense, but instead of putting your center in the post, you use him up top and allow your four other players to work away from the ball to get into space. With having your center do this from the perimeter instead of the post, you are effectively removing the help defense that would otherwise be in the paint guarding your postman. This allows for maximum leverage of the space that's ultimately created. This doesn't work with just any personnel. The Celtics are at an advantage because they have the roster capable of putting four shooters around Rob, as well as players that are capable of executing this offense at a high level. Running Horford or Grant Williams in the four spot with Smart, Brown, and Tatum at the guard and forward spots allows for these off-ball actions to have a better chance of leading to open space. The Celtics aren't the only team operating in this way, but their execution is among the most effective. It's coincidentally very similar to how the Warriors operate with Draymond Green as the facilitator, surrounding him with shooters in constant motion and cutting. Perimeter shooting from your front court still comes at a premium, but this approach to offense is, in a way, a proof of concept that it's not mandatory to have front court spacing as much as it's important to have a center that can make quick decisions and find guys making good cuts if your goal is to have a team execute an offensive game plan that prioritizes off-ball movement on the wings. I think this is where the quote-unquote center position is heading, to where you don't inherently have to have five three-point shooters on the floor. It's much more advantageous to have a big that can facilitate offense and have reliable skill to help keep things flowing. The Magic have this in Wendell Carter Jr., the Nuggets have it in Jokic, the Raptors have it in Pascal Siakam, and more and more teams seem to be recognizing how advantageous it is to have the flexibility of running your offense through your big man. If the goal of spacing is to open up good high percentage looks at the rim or collapse defenses, instead of trying to have five players on the perimeter who can shoot threes, why not just use your big man as the passer and let your four other floor spacers do the rest of the work? Obviously, this is easier said than done. You need a coach that can craft and implement this type of game plan, and you need a player like Rob Williams, who is a guy that has great floor vision and feel for the game. Three-point shooting comes at a premium, but I think pretty soon teams are gonna start to realize the versatility that can come from having a center that, while maybe they aren't able to shoot threes, can reliably find your other players in a creative motion offense. If you guys enjoyed this video and you wanna see more like this, please consider subscribing and leaving a like like. That's the number one way to support the channel and help me continue making content. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.